basis of uh, bioweeders, it's an organic uh, herbicide, fully certified. So it's used pretty extensively in organic vineyards and things like that. Uh, it's been around for about 20 years. Um, we've just come out with a new formulation. So it controls a good broad amount of uh, weeds, both grasses, broadleaf, and obviously blackberry. Uh, it also controls weed seed as well. So it does a dual action. Uh, so you don't have to be applying several different chemicals. You're only applying a pine oil based uh, natural product. So the basis of how it works or its mode of action is instead of being a, a poison that's getting translocated into the plant, it's using its alkaline properties to, it's got a stripping agent. So it'll use the waxy cuticle of the leaf uh, and break down that surface. So you'll see once you put it on, it's quite fast acting because you'll strip that layer off the t surface of the leaf. Uh, the plant will try and transpire and it sucks all the energy out of the plant. Um, so the area we're sort of standing in right now is an area I've treated probably three weeks ago. Uh, because of the nature of blackberry, you can start to see some emerging shoots coming from the bases, if you look carefully. Um, this is at the stage now uh, where you're looking to do a follow-up treatment. Like with any sort of synthetic herbicide you would use, it's about getting contact um, and keeping it under control. So this, if you've seen the pictures, you can sort of see it was quite low level, a bit like this section over here. If you look up there in that little, there's a tiny sectional blackberry there. So it was low just after being slashed. It's probably had a few weeks to regrow. Um, that's the best case scenario. So because it is a contact herbicide, you're looking to get as much coverage as you can. So when it's in a, a big bush like that, you're really just gonna be dumping too, too much product onto it. Um, so it works really well after slashing. So if you're looking for a, an organic or natural product to go in with succession of, of the slashing or cutting back, and you're not looking to use synthetic herbicides, this is an option because you can come through once it's regrown just a little bit and sort of treat it. So at this rate, uh, within 18 months you'll be able to knock knock this around 18 months to two years with about four treatments throughout that time so it's about letting it grow to probably 15 20 centimeters coming back in and treating it and obviously the biomass gets reduced significantly each time so the spray amount and the amount of product you're using reduces each time as well so over time it will um, because it's non-systemic though it's not poisoning the roots you're actually starving the plant of its energy so it's cutting out that water cycle and that's why it's a little bit different to some of your conventional herbicides where you want to spray when it's in full growth so it sucks it in because it's attacking its sort of natural process the more stress the plants under uh, the better it'll work because it's trying to so when you've treated it like this and it's ready to shoot out it's taking all that energy from the roots trying to put it into making new shoots so that's when you attack it and then obviously it's, it takes a few times because of the nature of the product. But if you can do it at a pretty regimented process, uh, we have had really good sex, uh, success with um, dairy farmers that are using it for their fence lines, organic dairy farmers that conventionally they've just been cutting it back, cutting it back, cutting it back. Uh, while with adding yeah, the bioweed into the system after it, so with that integrated pest management type situation, they're getting really good results within sort of 18 months, they're actually killing out uh, plants. So. How, how big would you let them get before you hit it the second time? I'd probably leave it maybe another, that's what I'm saying, with, with maybe four treatments over a season or a year. Um, so you want to get it maybe 15 to 20 centimetres coming out again. So this isn't too bad. It's a bit harder to see when we sort of walk back up. Just have a look at that little patch over there and you'll see that's a pretty prime amount. So you want single storey so you, you can get most of the leaf coverage. Um, but enough biomass that it's really trying to put that energy outside of its root system. Uh, it's no withholding period. We're not registered through APVMA for uh, waterways, but it has a about 24 hours and it'll naturally break down and oxidize with that. As so it's non-residual, you have no issue spraying around stock or we, our, one of our sort of bigger areas from farming is council. So things like playgrounds and people are getting a bit more wary of spraying um, synthetic herbicides and things like that here and so so forth uh, they can get away with spraying this in that area because obviously you don't need to mask up and be in a sort of sorry I think it's quite packed can you do it on the edges of the uh, not when it's in wet so it's just when it's dry. yeah when it's dry so if you if you can 24 hours before or 48 hours it'll break down naturally so it's just um, because it's an oil based product we just don't have registration
information okay. for waterways because it's not worth our time because it, uh, you're not going to get the, the kill in water, water-based plants because it needs that uh, contact. It, it works on foliar, so if, if you're spraying around things that have uh, established uh, trees or even small trees that you're planting, um, if you don't get over spray onto the trunks or things like that, it's not going to have an issue because there's no photosynthesizing properties in those stalks. Anything with a leaf, and that's why I work quite well on broadleafs or growing suckers like this yeah. because the, all of it's green and all of it's doing that job and all of it has that cell wall that you can break down. Um, so it works on a quite a wide range of things, but anything that's quite woody because that biomass is in the actual stem of the plant, uh, it gets a bit more difficult. So because it is a contact herbicide, you, you want to get as much coverage as you can. So, so. I'm thinking of the broadleaf thing that means that you'll have an area of grass that most likely is killed yeah. when you do yep. it. And again, we have a few different rates to put it on at. Um, it's a 20% mix for blackberries because they are just so heavy. Um, and it's a natural product, so you've got to mix it pretty high. But things for broadleafs, uh, your general garden weeds, you can go at 10%, um, and it won't affect if you're trying to protect your cooch or something like that. Um, it'll brown it off, but you're not going to knock the rhizomes out of it. So there, there are options like that, but we have application manuals that go into a bit more detail. Does it work on gorse? On gorse? Yeah. Yes, it does. So, yeah, if you look here, this one I sprayed. So it works quite well on gorse actually. Um, again, the, the root system, if you can wait for that to shoot up again, yep. exact same sort of thing with blackberry. So you'll sort of wait for those shoots to come through again because I assume there's an extensive root system under that one. Um, and again, it's about knocking that biomass out. So as, as long as you're using it outside in a, a open area, you don't need any protection. It's only when you're mixing the product because as a, it's quite strong just as it's a pine oil product. Um, but in terms of if you're using this kind of gear, you don't need any respirator or anything like that. But you will smell it. I'll, I'll spray just a tiny bit over here just to give you an idea. I'm not going to spray a lot because it is obviously so windy. Um, but you'll smell it straight away. So again, it's, if you can, it's, it's really good for small, small blocks. And if you've just got some areas you really need to get under control, um, if you can really be eyes on, and checking it and waiting for it to get to that point. It's not so much this month, that month, this month. It's depending on obviously weather and that kind of thing as well. So, so would you say there's probably an active growing season that you probably have to control three times? Yeah, yeah. Again, it, it depends on the amount of rain you get. So if you're irrigating as well, if you can turn off the irrigation while you're trying to control blackberry, it'll kill it out a lot better because you're just giving it more energy, uh, which you're trying to knock out. So it's sort of that goes in that cycle. Um, the native grasses and other vegetation, yep. if you've got the luxury of a small place, if you're sufficiently precise then you'll, you'll, some of that will live or in reality if you've got blackberry like this yep. you're pretty well killing off the other remnant vegetation? A good majority of it yes, um, it. but if it's spot spraying, yeah because it is a non-selective, yeah. um, but again you're not, it, the other thing to add is it comes out at a a pH of about 7 because it's an alkaline product so a lot of herbicides are acid based um, which lots of tests have been done on soil microbes and earthworm populations uh, and has no effect again without that residual properties so you're not sitting in the soil and you're not killing like with glyphosate or something where you can see exactly where you've been for months sometimes after if you've let it sink in too much so it has a benefit in that way um, but again, yeah, it, it'll kill basically anything it touches. Before that, um, like I, I, I asked if, if you just mow down, constantly mow down, wouldn't that weaken the, the roots? And somebody said, no, the roots are there forever. How, how is this different? Um, to explain it, the... Is it because it draws? Yeah, exactly right. So it's, it's more, with when you're mowing, um, it's like giving it a fresh season, like you're pruning. Um, so you're not actually making the plant work in the same way as if you're taking out the only the top layer of it. It's struggling first to try and bring water up to keep that balance. Okay. Um, so when it's cut, it knows it's been cut. Sort yeah, of. So if that makes sense. So while, while the oil is on it and, and, and stopping the, the transpiration, yep. it's drawing. Yeah, it's drawing all the energy out, and that's why I'm with with the, it's that regimented ongoing.
exactly right. Yeah, yeah. So and that's why that it will take sort of a year to eighteen months because it's just constantly attacking it, so to speak. Yep. Uh, ten liters is, I believe, it's two hundred and twenty, including GST. Yeah. And where so. do you buy from? Uh, we online is our best thing. Oh, I can give you my details and then I can sort of do a thing where I'm in this area pretty often and drop it out and that kind of thing. But we do have an online website as well and we sort of post it out and that kind of thing, um, depending on what sizes you want. Uh, what you used in this little... For this little area, I think I used... It was probably only about five litres with that, uh, that gun. So the 10 litres yep. um, mixed... How many, how many, how many square meters would would that? Um, uh, sort of off the top of my head, we, it's a roughly fifty liters or fifty to seventy liters of product a hectare, um, and that's broad acre spraying. So fifty liters per hectare. Yep. And that that's that's the the mix or or the, or the concentrate. That's the concentrate. Yeah. Okay. So it'd be in about five hundred liters of water, I believe. So it's quite high. Uh, we just we're trying to work that out at the moment because it's an alkaline based and a lot of the dyes are for acid based yeah. herbicides it it goes a bit funny yeah. um, but it, it comes out like milky white oh, okay. so you can see it um, but yeah we yeah yeah and again in the, some of those pictures I, I showed that I was handing around that that second picture was 10 minutes after you can yeah. see it blackening off so yeah. you can see what I was talking about with it stripping the the leaf layer so that's it's basically all it's doing with that sort of thing uh we would obviously not be spraying in this wind all no. this this heat with the sun because you want to keep it on the leaf surface as long as possible so it can break down as much as possible so early morning when it's dewy 10 to 15 20 degrees is perfect it can get this hot after but if you can spray in the morning when it's early and cool it'll stay on the leaf without evaporating um so you might see now if i spray it's, I've demo purposes so you can see the coverage, but within 10 or 15 minutes it might evaporate. So um, early morning is the best case scenario. Does it matter how cold it is? It works better above sort of 10 to 15 degrees. Um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely better cooler than it is hotter. Yeah. Uh, just because of the evaporation. Even at this time of year, sometimes I'm wanting so that a bit yeah. cooler than that. Yeah. So. But again, that's like any herbicide. You shouldn't be really spraying over 30, 35, yeah, 30, depending on what it is. But it's all on the label and that kind of thing as well. All right, so you can see the same sort of thing as Phil was saying. Um, Basically, the point of dripping off. This is a high psi, so again, it's sort of 15 to 20 bar, um, so 400 psi, just yeah. so you can get that circulating action for this gun. Would you be able to get that sort of thing with that two pack? Yeah, so they, I think they range from about 60 to 70, 60 to 90 psi, but you just will have to spend a little bit more time. Um, so when you're looking for backpack spraying, you're looking to get a either a full cone nozzle or a flat fan nozzle with a coarse droplet. Um, you wouldn't be able to get the pressure out of this gun, um, but you, you're just looking to get a flat fan because you want to get that coverage. So a lot of them are sold with a hollow cone, which is made for uh, usually glyphosate because um, you just need to touch plants. So if you can get something that's solid, you get a lot better of the coverage. Um, flat fan. Flat fan. Yeah, that's the one. 